Hey, it's him here. What if I told you that Google Stadia is less about gaming and more about the future of Google itself? Although this time, we didn't see any self-driving cars or robots doing backflips, Stadia was an obsolete chat dropper and quickly stole the spotlight. Google positioned Stadia as an attempt to democratize the gaming experience. It's not just the gamers that Google is after this time, it's everybody. Google is planning to make gaming so good that it becomes tough for anybody to resist it. But why? This video is all about things that you missed in the Google Stadia presentation. Stadia lets you play any game anywhere anytime. If the game is available on Stadia, you can play it in few seconds on any device with zero installation time. You can start playing a game by simply clicking on a link. At this point, you might be wondering how is such a thing even possible? Here's how. Instead of our consoles having to run the games, the data centers would run them at high quality and stream it back to our devices. By doing so, all of the graphic intensive processing and number crunching happens on the data centers and only the video of the gameplay is streamed back to the user. This cuts the need for gamers to buy a dedicated console. There is also the special Stadia controller that directly hooks up to Google Stadia Center or Wi-Fi. This approach massively reduces the latencies and provides a smooth experience compared to traditional gaming consoles. With Stadia, graphic intensive AAA games can run smoothly even on a lightweight Chromebook. You also get an added benefit of simultaneously streaming your gameplay at 4K resolution on YouTube. Stadia aims to be the go-to platform for gaming, live streaming and development. Google is able to pull off such a feat due to three inherent advantages. Starting with the infrastructure, Stadia makes use of Google data centers all over the world with 7500 edge nodes. Since they are spread across countries, it enables faster connectivity and seamless gameplay. And if you are curious about these nodes, they are the ones powering Google search engine. Each Stadia instance has an impressive spec that is much better than the current Xbox and PlayStation counterparts. Stadia will work exclusively on Chrome browser. Considering that 63% of the world uses Chrome as its current browser, it's actually pretty good. I would say this gives an unfair advantage to Google. Third and the most interesting advantage is their brand new Stadia controller. Although Stadia can work with any controller or keyboard, it offers an exclusive controller that can directly hook up to its data center or Wi-Fi. By letting the controller directly talk to the data center, it eliminates undesirable latencies that you typically see in a traditional gaming console. Not only does Google save the latency issue, but it also facilitates cross-device gameplays. This is how they were able to switch between multiple devices during the demo. Also, this is what gives Stadia its magical touch. For a 4K resolution 60 frames per second gameplay, you would require a 30 megabits per second connection. And for 180p resolution, you would require a 25 megabits per second connection. Almost 60 plus countries have an average data speed of more than 25 megabits per second. And we'd be seeing more countries in the bandwagon soon. The game controller also houses Google Assistant and an on-demand live stream button that can take you live any moment on YouTube. Since all of that happens via Google Data Center, you'd have a very seamless experience throughout your gaming session. With Stadia, Google will stitch the fragmented world of gaming and streaming. They even ran a pilot called Project Stream along with Ubisoft to validate their cloud gaming approach. 200 million daily active users visit YouTube for watching gaming videos and it's increasing year on year. With one third of the planet filled with gamers, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Stadia also offers additional features that will make you go crazy. Google wants to make gaming as simple as opening a web link. You can instantly play any game that you want with the click of a button. This is cleverly designed to favor instant gratification and impulse gaming. With their hardware innovation and current architecture, it's possible for you to switch between devices while still maintaining the gaming session. You can play the same game on your mobile, laptop or television with the Stadia controller. State Share It lets you share any playable moment in a game, including the world state, the items that the player carries, inventories and whatnot. This can be shared as a link to your friends or even subscribers. This is really a cool concept since it opens a wide array of possibilities. You can taunt your friends to beat your best or experience a boss battle directly. Crowdplay, it's an interesting feature that makes multiplayer gaming as casual as possible. Instead of just watching the live stream, you can join the game real-time on YouTube. 
This way, Stadia also redefines engagement and content discovery. Google claims that it aspires to be the Netflix of gaming. Although competitions like PlayStation, GeForce, Shadow, Jump and many others exist, Google's infrastructure capabilities dwarf them. Interesting to note that Microsoft, Sony, Amazon, Walmart and Apple are in the race and it's going to get real hot in a few months down the lane. Although Google never spoke about the pricing model of Stadia, experts speculate it to be around $15 to $30 per month. Google might even go predatory by allowing free access up to some time and then charging eventually. Remember, if Google can get you hooked during the trial period, it's a guaranteed success. With Stadia, Google gets access to player data across a wide range of games. This is going to be really valuable for its AI. During the start of this session, Pichai mentions how DeepMind used self-play technique to learn from games. DeepMind mastered complex games like Chess, Do and Shoji and was able to beat the best Go players that the planet has ever seen. For us, it's just a matter of playing the game. For Google, it's an important step towards creating general purpose AI. This can solve many foundational problems which exist today. Games will help AI to tackle real world challenges. Games are really good for AI since they are analogous to the real world but with clearly defined objectives and rewards. We have seen this work in the case of OpenAI. OpenAI, founded by Elon Musk and Sam Altman, offers a helping hand in this context, literally. OpenAI 5 is a machine learning project and a system that defeated human players in a Dota 2 game. The objective here is to learn the rules efficiently and win the game. The same system that learned from the game was then used to control the movements of a robotic hand. What's interesting to note here is that its dexterity rapidly increased after learning from the game. The research team was able to observe key improvements as a result of the experimentation. Quote, we basically reached the same level of performance using the exact same code that was used for the experiment. Within just a couple of weeks, we reached parity with what we had been trying to build for months before. I think we are all very surprised. End quote. Don't get me wrong here, the Dota 2 bots won't be able to control a robotic hand directly, but the learning systems behind the Dota 2 bot and the mechanical hand are general enough to solve each task with a high level of ingenuity. Now, in the case of Google, it's not just a mechanical hand problem. It's solving problems ranging from web page indexing to self-driving cars to backflipping atlas. Stadia can fast track solving such real world problems which in turn can accelerate Google's growth. Google is slowly inching towards becoming a real life matrix, maybe an actual oasis itself. What started out as cloud gaming could morph into MMOSG, which stands for Massive Multiplayer Online Simulation Game. In such games, we'd usually be wearing a digital reality headset and we'd experience the game as if we were in it. Google Daydream or any other VR headset can be used to jump into Stadia games where we would be playing along with our fellow virtual buddies. That's a tectonic shift in gaming experience and is very likely to happen at some point in the future. You might have even seen a rudimentary version of the VR matrix during the Facebook Spaces demo. With a bit of hardware innovation, imagine streaming your real-time body movements to Stadia and playing the game in real-time. The potential is huge when you factor mixed reality glasses like HoloLens, Magic Leap, etc. An interesting project which directly relates to this scenario is Google's very own project, Soli. Project Soli involves a millimeter wave radar chip that can detect very fine gestures with fingers and hands. It can then be used for playing games using hand gestures on mobile devices, computers and electronics. It could compound the gaming experience when used along with VR or MR. With such innovations, we can expect the metrics real soon, at least for gaming. When we think of Stadia, it doesn't necessarily have to be a single dedicated instance for each player, especially when it's a multiplayer game. Instead, imagine a massively powerful computer running a single game with several cameras corresponding to each player in that game. In theory, the game world has to be simulated only once for 1000 players rather than spawning 1000 instances for 1000 players. All of the physics, animations, character movements, bullets, waving trees, exploded debris from a destructible building, all of it is in perfect sync for these thousands of players. Massive performance can be unlocked by centralizing the gameplay. 
Stadia makes use of Linux and Vulkan APIs to make games compatible to its data centers. Keeping compatibility aside, Google aims to parallelize and distribute the gaming loads as evenly as possible. It's also worth noting that the AMD GPUs are customized for Stadia to boost the performance. With the mighty backbone of Google data centers, Google can enable insane gaming constructs. Stadia will not only be about gameplays, it's going to be a development platform as well. As of 2018, gamers comprise one-third of the global population. Google wants to attract people who build, play, and watch games. Now that's a sizable chunk of the population. In Sundar Pichai's words, it's all of you. Starting with the gaming environment, it's going to be packed with a lot of features for developers compared to a traditional siloed gaming console. Adding on to the cool features that we already mentioned before, Features such as style transfer on gaming environments and local split screens using Stream Connect will give Google a platform edge over its rivals. Take a look at NVIDIA's interactive AI rendered virtual world, where the AI renders the cities, landscapes, and layouts based on real world. Now imagine what Google can do with its Street View data. By attracting developers, Google will be a real console killer, having a big bite of the gaming market if it can pull this off successfully. Stadia's website has a secret Konami code easter egg that lets you see a 3D model of the gaming controller. This code worked from both mobile and PC. Given Google's history of killing projects, it's good to maintain a healthy level of skepticism about Stadia as well. However, this time, it's probably not going to be that way. The gaming market is expected to be worth $180 billion by 2021. With Google's deep pockets, it doesn't have to worry about money at all. But for the rest of its competitions, it's a clear message that they can't be complacent and forces innovation. By keeping games reachable through a single click, Google will truly break the barriers. While all of that seems to be really good with Google targeting Stadia release by the end of 2019, we can expect few headline grabbing announcements from the big three. I truly hope that Stadia doesn't end up like that big rock which they kept in the middle of the stage for no reason. Regardless, a common consensus is that Google has kickstarted a technological revolution and it's going to have a snowball effect in the tech world that would inevitably cause a major disruption. What do you think about Google Stadia? Will Google be a real console killer? Do you think it will be a catalyst in the AI revolution? Share your thoughts in the comment section. See you all in the next video. Until then, stay tuned.